we're gonna try and be, 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 be. Mm. Bean! Most valuable pre-workout in the history mm, of sports nutrition, apparently. Mike feels sick from his pre-workout. Do, yeah. It looks like somebody's dieting. How do you feel? Umbrella to failure. <laughs> Is it on? It's on. It's on. It's on, mate. <laughs> it's on. Any <laughs> fingerprint on there now? There's no fingerprint Brilliant. on there, is there? Well, I mean, greasy is there? I think so, yeah. I can see it, yeah. Yeah, rub it off, mate. Leave this bit in. Greasy. Today, we are going to talk about training to failure and reps in reserve. Mm. We've talked about it before, but we're going to be a bit more opinionated today. Yeah. Because it's quite annoying. Everyone just changed their mind because it's one person says so. It's changed their mind. Um, so anyway, it's change your mind, we're going to go to the gym. We're going to chat a bit about that. But before we go, we're going to try and be, 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 be. Mm. Because it's the best thing ever. 11 Literally. out of 10, probably. Literally 11 out of 10. Yeah. So we're going to get this jungle juice. It's not a flavour, is it? I don't know what flavour that is, mate. No. What, you, you guess what flavour that is. What, what would you even guess that to be? A bit what racist can you even guess? Sure. Yeah. Banana? <laughs> 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 Bananas are in the jungle, so what are you looking at? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think what other fruits are in there, is my point. It's got to be banana. What other fruits are in the jungle? Them. Coffee? It's not fruit, is it? Wait, it is actually. Is it? Yeah. Is it actually? She has aubergine, isn't it? Well, you yeah. didn't know, did it's you? It's coffee fruit. Harry? Yeah, it's a bean, isn't it? Yeah. Bean? It's a fruit, mate. It's a fruit, mate. It's not. It's not. I'm pretty sure it's a fruit. No, it's not a fruit, though, is it? I'm pretty sure it is a fruit, though. Two hours later. No, it's not, though. I'm pretty sure it is. Right. We're going to well, have to find this out. It's going to go on the YouTube video because Harry's going to pop it in with Wikipedia, isn't he? Either way, one of us is wrong. Well, we'll have a look at it at the dinner table. Breakfast we'll do it then. Table. Right, MVP. Yeah. It's not a fruit, is it? A codeine bitartrate. Codeine bitartrate, a gram. A thousand milligrams or a gram. Yeah. Isn't it really? Got to be in there, that. It's got to be in there. You just need it. You do need it. You do need it. You need all of it, I think. I think I've only had half a scoop, mate. I think I'm man enough. Yeah, no, you, you should have half a scoop. Yeah. Mate. I'll have full. Let's go. Yeah, it's a hot day. I'm hanging in the sunshine. You should hit me with the splash gun so I cool down. Won't you come on over? What does MVP stand for? Um, most valuable pre-workout in the history mm, of sports nutrition, apparently. Jungle juice. Do you want to explain the benefits, mate, of having a pre-workout actually, like, before you train? There's a myriad. So you see other YouTubers or Instagrammers or whatever drinking it on the way to the gym. You're going to need 30 to 45 minutes to, just, have, uh, to have an impact. Just make sure I'm doing this right there. I'm getting sherbet-y kind of lemony. Lemons don't go in general. It doesn't taste like any fruit at all. No, it's nice, though, isn't it? It doesn't taste like... Do you know what it tastes like? No. It tastes sherbet -y. Do you know what it tastes like? Fruit salad. Mm. Yeah. Fruit salad, isn't it? No, the sweets. You know the sweets? Fruit I should salad. really spit it out and taste it. But they're supposed to be raspberry and pineapple. Are oh, they really? Mm -hmm. Where do pineapples grow? I'm going to change in about 30 minutes, so. This is a lot. You give me a high volume here of fluid. You can get this from anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Don't get it from anywhere in particular. There's no, there's no need. Get it from any place. Yeah. Probably be the same price pretty much anywhere. I don't know if you can get it from anywhere though. That's no, the thing. I think you can. If you just went in line and got it, you sure reckon? Find it. Mm. I definitely wouldn't be using anybody's code though. I wouldn't. No. Let's get it. Unless we had a code to then use ours. Also, should we? Um, oh, you got any training diary? Huh? Talk about this, shall we? Yeah, we got sent a training diary. This is your best friend, apparently. Mm. Mm. I mean, I haven't got any friends. So. Yeah. This is a training logbook. And you can just record, you know. You're training in it. This diary is a property of, and that'll be, that'll be my name that I put in there. It's safe then as well, because no one could rip that page out and yeah. keep it as their own. No. Can do that. No, you can't. No, you can't do that. What's he doing? What diet? What, what diet, diet you, want? you want? Exercises, sets, reps, weight. There you go. It's pretty much what you want. Easy. A little bit for your cardio that will not have that anything in it. Might as well not be there. At any point. Honest. Let's go train. What are we training? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. <laughs> I'll tell you everybody's getting out of line for the water slide. 
proper itchy, yeah? yeah? Even my legs have got it, which I don't think I've ever had before. So beta alanine is basically a lactic acid buffer. So essentially what, what that means is that you could effectively do a few more reps potentially over the course of your session by buffering lactate to some degree and then be able to push yourself a little bit further. But the reality is not many people push themselves to that point anyway. And two, again, like people don't have the correct dosage loaded in their body for it to make actually that much difference. If you are following a reps in reserve style training, yeah, it is pointless. pointless. It's only useful if you train to failure. What a slide. Who's that? A handsome devil up there. I don't know who that is, mate. I've got now. Mike feels sick from his pre-workout. Do yeah. He's trained. Too, he's trained that, too hard. Yeah. No, you trained too hard, mate. That's your problem. I trained had a too sandwich hard. just before I went in, so it could be that. Mm, the gravy, the gravy mayo was not a good chance. Steak and caramelised onion with gravy mayo and onion bread it's from good, Sainsbury's. Very good. So we did uh, nine sets on back, nine sets on delts, three front, three rear, three mid. So yeah, we just did that. Reps and reserve, uh, probably like one most things. Probably. I think the problem is with reps and reserve to really keep a good. My shoulders hurting now. Actually, that's how much we've trained. Um, with reps and reserve, you have to keep a track of it over like weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah. So that was probably like leaving a little bit in the tank on most things, except for the end with delts. Took it to failure because now I can't hold the camera. That's how weak I am, I think. You are weak. Yeah. That's just because I'm weak as fuck. Um, but yeah, we started with pull ups. Pull ups. I'm pathetically weak on pull ups at the moment. Mike's a bit stronger than me on those. I did three sets, 10, 10, and then I went for an AMRAP, which was 11, Ooh, which is about the you're right. Hard. About right as a gauge, though, right? Yeah. yeah because yeah. you're not. It's about right. I did five, five, five because if I'd have gone to failure on the first one or two, I wouldn't have been able to get five at the end. Yeah. So Things like pull-ups, again, you can't really go into failure on the first set. No, that'd be, like, that'd you'll be just stupid. diminish the rest of your volume. That would be stupid. And then after that, wire, wide grip row and straight on pull-downs, which felt nice, actually. They felt money. They did feel they money, felt yeah. money. Tension was money, yeah. Oh my God, this is really heavy holding this camera up. Then it was uh, lateral raises, which are always fun. Mike loves a lateral raise. Um, lateral raise. Every session. Lateral face raise. pulls, always good for the rear delts, face pulls. And then front raise. finished on front raises, which we don't normally do, to be fair. No. We've done presses, but we're doing pressing tomorrow. Yeah, that's the thing. So that's why I thought we'll do some fronts because we weren't doing any pressing. You've got to think about your programming. Mm. See, you've got to think about it. And now we're going to utilize some amino acids in the form of poultry. What are you just saying? I'm going to have some. Ch I'm going to have the chicken thighs, medium, and char grilled veg. Well, you can ask Dan what he's having. What are you having? I haven't decided yet. I've decided. What, what are you having? I'm going to have the grilled chicken wrap. That's what I usually get for. Yeah. Quite good. It's a good shot, isn't it? Now that you've uh, experienced it, how do you rate the most value pre-workout? Most valuable pre-workout in sports nutrition see, history? <coughs> see, I've already had it and I like it, but what do you think? It was just all right. Like I don't I hate those tingles. Yeah. I hate those tingles. You're not a big fan, are you? No, I'm not a fan of the tingles, but I've got nothing to compare it to. Like, yeah, I had a good workout. It looks like somebody's dieting. Dieting? You gotta get veg in, mate. Mm. I don't like eating veg. I, I happily admit that I don't like eating veg. No. It annoys me. But health in it. Bit hot. <laughs> where are you? Where, where are you going? Kelowna. Let's go for a coffee. I need um I need some fruit, so we're going for a coffee. Yeah. It's a fruit. Coffee's a fruit. We've established that already. I actually didn't know that. It is though. Coffee's so no coffee's a plant. It's, it's a fruit. fruit. Coffee's a fruit. So why did you get two bodies, Harry? Why did you buy two umbrellas? That you can never be too too dry. You can never be too dry. Mm. I think you probably could. Vagina. Because if anything's too dry, it's by too, default too much. Yeah, it's too much by default. Yeah. So. 
if it's too by dry. Saying yeah. it's too, you, by you saying you can never be too dry, I'd say you can be because you've said you're too dry. Yeah. So why are we talking about Reps Reserve versus Training Together? The reason that we're talking about it is because everyone has just changed their mind recently. Well, because it. Jordan Peters has changed his mind. Basically, yeah. Jordan Peters was on a podcast with um, Mike Revive Stronger and Mike Isletel. And Mike's obviously been a big proponent of Reps and Reserve for quite some time. And Jordan Peters, obviously, open minded, has uh, approached the, the, the same methodology and has allowed, I think, Pascal to, um, to, to plan for it. But, but, but Jordan Peters, as well, has trained, trained as a failure, like his whole, pretty much his whole bodybuilding career to get to the point he's at now. And then, and then you respect somebody like that for then going, actually, let's try a different approach, yeah. let's, let's be open minded. He's recognised he's reached his limit as well. He yeah. said like, he's reached his limit, he couldn't just keep adding loads to the bar, right? Mm. So, just because he's changed, ev everyone else should probably change. Everyone else. Why not? Everyone that's, else changed. That's the issue. That, yeah. that, that now everybody else who is a John I mean, Peters fan. What would be embarrassing is that if, if you, you know, about a year ago you released a video and were like, why would you train Reps and Reserve? Like, train to failure is the only way. Trip Reps and Reserve is for pussies and, and almost then, take the piss out of it on social media, joke about it. And then all of a sudden, because Jordan's changed, actually, yeah, let's change. Let's change. Let's say change. nobody notices. Let's under the radar. No one notices. That actually, I'll, I'll change as well, and then go. We actually did a video on it not long ago, saying that they're both actually pretty yeah. reasonable. Yeah, it's pretty. They yeah. both can be used fairly well, you know. And it's just like personal preference is one thing, but also experience level, things like that. Again, someone like John Peters, yeah. experienced, knows how to do reps and reserve now. But unless you've trained to fail for a while, you probably don't know what it is. Yeah. One year though, it's probably not not enough. No, just change. Like honestly, just change. Just give it the trends though. Just whatever yeah. everyone else is doing, follow it. Cause, follow it. Because it's not like oh yeah, um, you, as a, as a scientist, you're open-minded and open-minded to change because the science hasn't changed. No. And the fact that you go from one to the other to the other, depending on which bodybuilder you're following at the time, shows that actually you, you, you're so not going with science. You're going with what your favourite bodybuilder is doing. Yeah. You're just copying that. Yeah. And then, and then also as well, like, I think it was flexible diet can't get you lean. But now, but now it can get you lean. No, it can get you lean. Yeah. Now, now you practice flexible diet. So yeah, yeah. Oh, whatever. Well, you, you can. It was, first it was, it, you can. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, and when we're a different coach, you can't. Can't. But now and actually. And also to failure. And now. But now actually, you can. Flexible reserve and flexible yeah. dieting. Yeah. No, you can. Yeah. Just, just keep changing your mind every, just keep every changing six, mind, nine yeah. months. It's fine, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Definitely wouldn't diet for a holiday either. You are out on Bullets to Failure. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel? Umbrellas to Failure. Yeah. You are to Failure. You can't hold any more umbrellas. I reckon I could get one more. I mean, you are dry. So. I am dry, yeah. The thing is, I need two because my shoulder went. You do, yeah. Your shoulder is that big. Yeah, yeah you'd be fine with one. I'd be fine with none, to be honest. I just turn sideways. The rain can't get me. Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> so, what you should have said was that you can never be dry enough, not you can never be too dry. Yeah? Yeah. That's good English, mate. Yeah. You can never be dry enough. In it. You can never be dry enough. That's yeah. what I should have said. Not you can never be too dry. Yeah. See? Right, so we're just heading back now. Uh, we've got a couple more videos to film. We've got a podcast to do. Yeah. We've got all sorts of stuff to be getting on with. Don't forget to keep an eye out for our podcast. The link's below. If you want to download our podcast, by the time this comes out, there'll probably be about four episodes in the bag, um, I reckon. So keep an eye out for that. But anyway, we've just arrived, so uh, better crack on. <coughs> so, what you actually need to know about training to failure, reps and reserve, etc., etc., both have their place, right? Yeah. That's the thing here. There's no one right way to do it, clearly, as we've just established. Mm -hmm. Different people change their view based on what they want to do each month it seems what i would say though is that if you are going to go with one of these protocols is stick to it mm -hmm. for a consistent period of time because that's how you're gonna get the benefits of it mm -hmm. i think i personally what i think is that you should potentially use a mixture of of uh, of these things how dare you be so conservative that's, and moderate that's, Michael? that's uh, honestly what i would do like exactly the same like but again it's not sexy is it to go oh well probably both in take a junction but again things. most people can't see the benefits of two I, th I think probably i think some people probably could i think the smarter people probably could like that you can see the benefits of both like it's very very hard to judge failure unless you have been training for an extensive period of time and you take yourself to that point to failure, yeah. a lot of beginners a lot of intermediate like even us like there's probably more 
more reps in the tank than you, than you think there is and even research backs that up so it's very very hard to judge failure so there's merit in training to failure consistently for a period of time so you realize what that feels like and then you can engage from there but also training to failure on the first set of every exercise is probably not going to be conducive so leaving a rep or two in the tank the first set the second mm -hmm. set and then going to failure on the last set of that exercise is probably the way that I would go for the majority of people I think there's there's certain protocols and certain things that people can use to get the benefits of both so like Mike said reps and reserve first few sets and then you can use things like drop sets and cluster sets to go to failure you don't have to take that weight to failure you can drop the weight down a little bit and go to failure using slightly lighter weight like that's a perfectly legitimate way of doing it but i think most people if i had if i had to pick one i would say most people would be better off doing reps and reserve for most people i don't think they need to go to that point to get a change in their physique um but that again is predicated on the fact that you know where failure is. Mm. You know how hard you can push yourself. Um, but there are certain exercises that some people just shouldn't be going to failure on because their form's not good enough. Like a lot of people doing pulling, doing pulling movements, squat movements, like they shouldn't be going to that point of failure. It's deadlifts. It's like your form breaks down. Like when failure, failure is when your form breaks down. It's when you can't perform mm. the movement effectively. Yeah. Not, not when, when you can't not lift Not just because you can't lift it off the floor, you can't move it. It doesn't matter. It's what muscle group you're trying to use. Again, on rows, your failure point is where you can't use your lats and your traps and your back to do the movement. If you can still use your arms it's pointless you need to do it properly that's my take on it that's kind of our take on it i think is again it's not sexy to say somewhere in the middle like do a bit of both or whatever but <coughs> ultimately you don't need to marry yourself to one protocol yeah and to be fair and you just look daft when you do because then when you go back on it and then go back on it and then go back on it like there's there's no point why don't you just say now i am training to failure now i'm doing reps in reserve there's benefits to both because there is not you shouldn't be doing this you're a pussy if you do that and then go back on it when your favorite bodybuilder says otherwise like you're now a pussy then. doesn't yeah it doesn't it doesn't make sense so there you go mm. drop a comment below your experience of reps in reserve training to failure which you prefer why yeah. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just whatever you prefer, however you like to train. I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We love you all very, very much. We and do. we'll see you again on the next video.